That is money right there. We'll notice the bull was actually above my feet a little bit. So what we've got to take consideration with that is going to add loft to the club. Nice swing. Hey golfers, Drew Mulholland here from Second Swing Golf, joined by Thomas Campbell, Master Club Fair at Second Swing in the middle of the fairway. Um, we're starting this episode of Swing Tips with Thomas's tee shot in the fairway. But why are we starting here, Thomas? The battery in my range finder just died. Okay, so we've all been there before. I've actually, long ago, we actually played golf without range finders. We did. But we're here again. So how would you approach the situation, Thomas, on the course? You know, I would imagine you're gonna be prepared enough in a tournament where you won't have this happen, but there are golfers out there that have probably had this before. Range finder, either they forgot it somewhere, they lost it, or their battery's dead and they don't have one. How do you figure out how far away you are? Yeah, you don't have to play golf with a range finder. You can find out your yardage in many different ways. Mm -hmm. First off, I'm taking a look here and I notice that the 150 marker right here, notice how it's got that little blue on the top of it. Yep. So typically what that means is that's at the back of the green. So typically a red marker means the pin's in the front, a white marker means the pin's in the middle, and a blue marker means the pin's in the back. Yep. So I know I'm about five or six paces away from this marker, and I got a blue mark. I'd probably just add five yards. Okay, so five yards from, and then usually these markers measure to the middle of the green, correct? Correct. So you're taking probably another 10 to 15 yards to the flag based on the 150. Well, it depends on how large the green is. So right. I, I know out here the greens on average are about 25 to 30 paces long. Okay. So I would maybe dissect the greens into a third. So I'd go kind of maybe like 10, 10, 10. Yeah. So I know that say 15 yards is essentially right at middle of the green, so yeah. that would be the white marker. The pins in the back, you know, I could add a, another 10 yards. Mm -hmm. The pins in the front, I could minus take away another 10 yards. Okay, I see. Okay, so so now on this shot here, what's like a yardage that you'll maybe play then, based on knowing that's the 150 to the middle of the green up there? Right. So call us five five paces to the to the marker. So 155 to the middle of the green. We know the pin is in the back. Yeah. So let's play at 165. All right. Pretty close. We got 162. There you go. Well, lucky for me, I found an extra battery in my golf bag. So I'm back to shooting some yardages. Okay. So. Next hole, we notice we got a little bit of slope here. Mm -hmm. You can see that the shot is elevated. So we need to think about it when we're playing because we want to make sure we get the right yardage for every single shot. Mm -hmm. With some range finders, they do give a slope function. Now that is technically not legal in golf events. Yeah. Some events will allow it just casual rounds, but if you're playing in, an, in a competition, you can't use the slope function. Right. So you got to figure out a way maybe in a practice round to actually figure out what your yardage is and write that, write that down. I do that actually when I'm playing a practice round for all my competitions, so I know what the actual elevation is. Okay. But I haven't, if I haven't played a practice round, I do have to find out a way to figure out how far this shot is. Mm -hmm. So 188 is the roar number. Okay, to the flag. To the flag, Okay. yeah. So what I'm looking at here, the first thing I'm kind of looking at is the slope on my tee shot, we'll notice the ball was actually above my feet a little bit. Mm -hmm. So my left foot is going to be higher than my right foot. So what we've got to take into consideration with that is going to add loft to the club. So this is actually probably going to add three or four yards in distance as well. Also got to think about what elevation we're at. And I'm going to guess here it's about a five yard elevation. So I'm going to add 188 plus about three yards for the slope plus five. So okay. now we're at 196. Okay. Okay, interesting. So those are those calculations you're trying to figure out, uh, you know, how far uphill we are, plus even like at the tee, you can kind of feel these things too. Yeah, if you can feel that, that, that there's some slope here, you definitely have to take that into, event, into consideration as well. Okay, so I have a 188 yard shot here, but I'm going to play this 196. 196. Okay. Nice swing. All right, Thomas, this tee shot here, I'm seeing a couple of fairway bunkers up there. There are, there's two. There's one on the left, there's one on the right, and this fairway is actually pretty narrow. There's mm -hmm. maybe 15 yards between those two bunkers. So we've got options. We've got to figure out first how far away those bunkers are. Yep. 
So I'm shooting the bunker on the left right now, and I'm shooting the back edge. The back edge is 282. Okay. The front edge is 262. So this bunker is about 20 yards long from the left, from yep. the front to the back. We take a look at the right bunker. The right bunker is 273 to carry, and it is 248 to the, to the bunker. So okay. we've got options here. Mm -hmm. So knowing this is a par five and knowing I like to take advantage of it, I know that my carry distance with my driver is just a little bit upward of 280. But we notice that brings that left bunker in still. Yeah. So for this particular shot, when I'm, when I'm hitting there, I'm gonna favor a little bit of the right shot, right, right side of the fairway, if I'm going to go up over okay. the bunker. The other play is to, probably the safer play is to lay up, so to pick a club that you're going to make sure you hit shorter than, what was it, 240? 247 on the right, the or right 262 one? on the left. Or you play a shot that's 250 and play left, right, and, and air on the left side, so you're gonna be short the left bunker. Yeah, it depends how deep the bunker is too. If, if the bunker's really penalizing, you definitely gotta be a little bit more course management wise, and yeah, mm -hmm. you can maybe lay up short. It's a short par five, you probably still can get home in two, or I probably still can get home in two. Mm -hmm. Or you can just play it as a true par five as well. Yeah. So Thomas, based on what you've just told me, what are you gonna do with this tee shot here? What I'm gonna do is I'm going to hit driver and I'm gonna take it over the right side knowing that I can cover the right bunker. Okay, okay. I, am a, I, I just by knowing how narrow this hole is and seeing it, I'm gonna lay up and hit my 240 shot to make sure I'm short of the bunkers. Yeah, just make sure you hit a club that you know is not gonna go more than 247 yards. All right, well, Thomas, you're kind of in a, an interesting predicament here. Yeah, that last shot wasn't a very good one, and I'm in trouble. Yeah, you have, so I look at this and I see, I see a very large bunker in your way. I, so, I don't see a ton of green to work with. What are you thinking here? Well, I've really got three options. First thing I like to do when I come and find my ball is I like to line myself up and see, can I go directly at the flag if I'm going up? I always mm -hmm. like to go up because that gives me a chance for the ball to stop. It's, it's borderline. Yeah. It's, it's, it's right on the very edge of the tree. Now, if I did hit a shot here, I do know if I aim a little to the right, I'll leave myself an uphill putt. So that's yeah. probably the smarter option is to just favor the right side, yeah. go up, know I can hit it over that bunker. Mm -hmm. But there are other options too. We have that bunker possibly to help us slow the ball down. So if, if you were, if I say I was over here another three feet, I can't go up now. Now I've got that option to maybe try and blast it through the bunker. Okay. Or we'll notice there's actually a gap between the two bunkers over here on the left. Yeah. I could either punch out to the side and roll it up there, or even I could punch out to the front edge of the green okay. and get myself a so, good chance. So based on those options here, what you're seeing, what are you comfortable doing and what shot are you going to try and play here? Well, knowing that I can hit it probably 10 feet right of the flag here if I go up, I like the higher shot because it gives me a chance to get the ball on the green and give myself a chance to get the next one up. If my ball was another three feet over here, I would probably would have chosen the option of going left there okay. and trying punching it on the back side of the green. Okay, so you're avoiding hitting the ball into the bunker right. or towards the bunker. Yeah, and th this hit both those shots. This hit one there where okay. we got a little bit lucky and then this hit one over here where not so lucky, three feet further left sure. and knowing that I can't go up. So that's, uh, I'll give you these two clubs here. Okay. I'm gonna do the the shot first where you go up. First thing I gotta make sure is I make sure I'm getting myself lined up to where I'm trying to go. So this is important because if I aim too far left, I'm gonna hit those tree right. branches. So I'm picking out an intermediate target right here, knowing where I'm trying to aim my club face at. And we got about 35 yards. Open the face up. Oh, well done. Look at that. And that's about 10 feet right of the flag. Okay, so what club now for this one? Got a, This a, one here. Let's go with nine iron. Nine iron, okay. Yep, right. Okay, so, and that, that lip of that bunker is just a little bit too, too steep to try and get too cute with. I'm gonna leave myself in the bunker if I try and blast yeah, it Yeah, so you're that. gonna kind of make sure you're right in the center of those bunkers. Right, so I'm just gonna hit out to the side, hit a little chop shot here. If I get it on the green, great. If it's just around the edge of the green, it's gonna be okay anyway. That's on, well done. That's on. 
Well done. Right, there's, there's plenty of different options on the golf course to play your shots. All right, Thomas, my ball here is on a bit of a side slope, right? It's going to be yeah, the ball below is my below feet, feet here. So how do you handle a shot like this? We're, what, 100 yards away? Yeah, you've, you've got 99 yards. I just shot it with the range finder. Um, you've got to kind of think about lie angle. So just like when we, when we fit at second swing in the fitting bay, lie angle is really important. Mm -hmm. So you imagine if you're standing on a slope when the ball is well, well below the, your feet. If you're going to come in at impact, what's going to happen to that club? That club, mm -hmm. in relevance to a flat horizontal line, is going to be very, very flat. Yep. A club that's too flat at impact, what's going to happen is the club's going to go from being straight to pointing over to the right. So we've okay. got to make an adjustment. So you've got to make an adjustment here where you have to aim to the left side knowing the ball is going to curve to the right. Is there a distance a difference at all that I should be worried about? Or so, the, yeah, the, the longer the shot, the further it's going to go offline. So if you had a longer shot, you would have to aim a little bit further. Okay. You've got to take into consideration where the ball, sorry, where the flag is on the green. Yep. So if we look, you notice the flag here, it's kind of back right. Yeah. So I still would for sure favor a little bit further to the left. Middle of the green here is not a bad shot. Okay. Yeah. All right, I'm going to give it a rip here. Yeah, so I would aim, pick yourself out a spot behind the green that's probably 20, 30 feet left of the flag. Okay. And just hit your shot to that, to that target. Does it look like I'm aimed left? <laughs> yep. That was pretty tasty right there. He played the uh, slope really well. That'll work. All right, so Thomas, this is kind of a, a tough situation here because the this tree right here is directly in my line to the green. Um, yeah, you can't so, go up. So, well, right, I cannot go up. <laughs> um, now, in past in a past swing tip video, you showed me how to hit a punch shot. I think the next element that I need now is how to basically curve that punch, that that punch shot. So, given where I'm at, a should I go right or left, and then how do I get it done? Right. Um, one thing that makes this shot even more challenging to curve the ball is we've got some slope to deal with. Mm -hmm. So we'll notice the ball is actually higher here than where your feet would be. Yep. So generally speaking, you would want to draw this shot sure. to help because the slope is going to help you. However, we don't really have much of an option to go right. Correct, because there's another tree. There's another <laughs> tree. So, okay. So we have 130 yards to the flag. Okay. This is, a, this is a tough one. This is a kind of a go for it or chip out and try and get up and down for your par because okay. we have OB left as well. Sure. So you got to take that into consideration as well. So the, the slope is going to make it hard for you to cut it. Yep. I, I know you typically do hit a little fade, so it may be a little bit easier for you to hit this particular shot. So I'm comfortable to know if you're going to try and cut it, you just have to hit a shot that you know that you can't reach the OB with. Right, okay. So yeah. I'm going to shoot one of the trees that's very, very close to the edge of the uh, edge of the OB, and that's about 135 yards away. Okay, and that's so if I'm, I'm going kind of straight in line. Okay, so I'm trying away. to hit a, in a punch shot that's not going to go that far. Correct. And if, it, if it fades, it fades. If not, I can get up and down. Right. Okay. So let's uh, grab a club that you know you're going to keep under the trees. I've got my 7-iron here. Perfect. I like, I like 7-iron here. It's not going to be a full seven iron. It's going to no. be kind of a little little chip cut, essentially. So, because the ball is above your feet, you definitely have to make sure that you leave that face open coming yep. through. So you got to aim a little left with your feet and your shoulders, and then you want to have that club kind of swing out towards me. So I feel like you're coming back like this. a little bit more out here. Okay. So that way you can then cut across your body right. a little bit and okay. leave that face a little. So I'm going to kind of go like this. Correct. Yep. Okay. Let's see it done. That is money right there. So the one thing I love about this shot, we knew that flag was 130 yards, mm -hmm. and we knew the OB left was 135. It's okay for that ball to come just a little bit short. Yeah. You can still chip that one in. That's mm -hmm. really only probably about 25, 30 feet away. Mm -hmm. Yeah, no, I am very satisfied with that result. That was a great shot. So you cut across the ball mm -hmm. really nicely, even though the ball was above this, your feet. You can see this divot is facing, you know, it's 
facing. Uh, right, it's facing OB. But, yeah. but you left the face angle open enough. Correct. Yep. So the bull curved. Okay, so Thomas, um, you got kind of a funky situation here too now. Well, you just showed me how to hit a great cut shot from the trees. Now it's my turn to show you how to hit a great hook from the trees. Okay, so that's the play. That's the hook. That's, that's what you're going for here, huh? That's my, really, my only option. That's a big cut to go the other way. So right. I've got a bit of a, I've got this tree limb I've got to make sure I keep under. So I'm definitely making sure I got enough cl uh, club that's going to stay lower than that. And then I really have to, because I've got this other tree in the way here. Yep. I have to start this about 30, 25 yards right of the right of the green. Okay. And get this thing to turn over. Okay. So are a, you picking out a specific aim point up there to to kind of start your shot at? Right. So you see that tree that's just on yep. the right side of the green? Yep. That tree trunk is okay. pretty much my my starting line that I want the ball to start on. Okay. Now how are you going to get the ball to hook 30 yards to the left? It's club path and face angle relationship. Okay. Just like when you hit your cut shot you left your face angle open to your path, caused the ball to do this. Yeah. For me, I have to have my club face closed to my path, so the ball curves to the left. Okay, so you're gonna swing out Correct. like this, with but a the club closed face club will turn face to and my face path. this way. Okay. Yes. So, just like I teach a lot of players how to even hit the ball straight, because most golfers slice the ball, Yeah. I have to swing out towards first base or right field, Yeah. but then I need to get that club face to turn over to get that ball to turn with it. Okay, gotcha. So setup. Setup is really important for this particular shot. For me to hit this particular shot, I have to aim a little to the right. I actually close my, my stance a little bit by dropping my right foot mm -hmm. back. Okay. My shoulder also kind of goes with it. So I'm actually aimed over towards that tree with my with my target line. Yep. Then my club face, I have my club face pointed towards where I'm trying to get the ball to go. Okay, so the end result, that's where you're right. That's where okay. Yeah. So if I was to swing my path down that line with a club face that is going towards the target, it would be close to my path. It would speed, it would create a spin axis on the ball to go to the left. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So I'm gonna hit this shot uh -huh. here. I have 190 yards. I have seven iron, and my stock number of seven iron is about 180 yards. However, because I'm creating top spin on the ball, and also because my club face is gonna be closed coming through. It's going to deal off the club, so, yep. so I need to further. take less club. Okay, essentially what I'm saying. Wow! Wow, you're putting left side of the green. <laughs> Very nice. I even overhooked that just a little bit too much. All right, well, Thomas, I learned a lot there. That was good. I I was actually surprised at how like well I hit some of my shots right away just by some of the things you told me like there was the shot from the ferry with the ball below my feet there was that punch where I had to slice it and it was just like that so I'm hoping it works that well for people that are watching too yeah both of those shots ended up right at the flag that was really <laughs> impressive actually yeah so I mean I appreciate the the tips and it's it's actually it's nice for me as someone that's not a pro to get a pro here to be able to tell me step by step how to perform some of these shots that you know I feel like some of those spaces we were at today are relatable for a lot of the people watching this because nobody is Tiger Woods hitting the fairway every time they're hitting it on the green every time uh, and I'm certainly not that so it's good to have that kind of information uh, available here and nobody has the exact same golf shot over again you're always going to be presented with different challenges golf is not a game of perfect yeah, you're right about that well golfers if you appreciated the, the content today the information from Thomas uh, subscribe to the channel and uh, drop a comment as well uh, we'll have a lot more of this type of content coming in the future. Very excited to make some more of that. So, Thomas, thanks for joining. Thanks for all your information today. I know I appreciate it, and I know the viewers will as well. And, golfers, if there's any other swing tips that you want to see, send us a comment, and we will get onto it.